Good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to this Remnant Community Church Roundtable, where we talk about how to walk out the practical truth of the scriptures in the everyday rhythms of our lives. Come on in, please, please, please begin to upload your comments in the chat box so that we can have an active and engaging dialogue, amen? Again, welcome to each and every one of you. And let me put this out here on the front end. If you did not, if you did not hear the preach word on this morning, please, please, please go back and review it. It is available right now on Facebook and it's also available on the Remnant Community Church uh, YouTube website. YouTube website is also available in the church app. So please, please, please go back and review the lesson. Pastor Glass, we talked about how the word works. The word works. So, But even if you didn't get a chance to hear the preached word, please engage us in this round table. Once we begin to open up and talk about what the text about, and I'm sure, I'm sure, sure, then you will have something to offer. So again, please start uploading your comments in the chat box. Be ready to hear, be ready to engage. Um, also remember that today is the first Sunday. It is Communion Sunday. You have a few seconds, if you have not already done so, to gather your elements so that you may partake in communion right alongside with us. Amen. So I'm going to um, give opportunity for Pastor Glassby to open, to welcome you in his own way. But again, begin to upload your comments in the chat box. Prepare your elements for communion. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. I see y'all coming on in. Hopefully everybody is ready. Amen. Uh, for this discussion, uh, we are uh, uh, lingering, giving a little time for those who have not gotten their amen um, sacraments together for the communion uh, aspect, which we will uh, uh, do uh, right off the top. Amen. Uh, prior to going into the discussion, but uh, we want to lend a little time for you to get ready uh, for that if you have not already. Uh, definitely, listen, this uh, is expected to be a grand discussion Amen. about how the Word of God works, watch this, in our lives. Amen. And then we can also use this time to express how we, uh, uh, what, uh, 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 measures we do, uh, use, amen, to convince others, amen, that the word of God works, amen, and even convince them to try the word of God for themselves. And so, look, we're looking forward to it's just a diety. God bless you. We're looking forward to this discussion, to the melody. God bless you this morning. We're looking amen. forward to this. A amen. Deacon S. Penn and Deacon Penn, God bless you uh, both this morning. Looking uh, to care for you. I said, Marlo, I did see you on here. God bless you. I want to <laughs> see some uh, comments. Uh, and look, and, I, and, and these are the names that I saw uh, also on the uh, broadcast. So talk about some of the stuff uh, that you heard uh, there. Maybe some stuff that you uh, didn't know, that you already knew, and st stuff yes. that you already have in practice right now. So talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. I see you, Deacon Lewis. God bless you this morning. We want to hear from you. Um, uh, so yeah, so we're going to go uh, into... Uh, the communion. Do you want to say anything prior to that? I just want to ask, just just those of you who've been logging on for any length of time, just can you just put in the chat box and let us know. We really want to know if this roundtable has been beneficial to you. Because I just, you know, I can just speak personally for myself. After hearing the preached or taught word, it's good for me personally to actually talk about it, to think it through, to work it out yes. in its practical application. That helps me to better grasp the word of God. And it helps me to remember and to walk away with something more than just hearing somebody just preach a good word or hearing somebody just teach an awesome sermon. So now it has applicability in my own life. So I just really want to know if this roundtable discussions have proven to be beneficial in your lives at all? Have you been able to ask questions and get them answered? Or how has sharing your own experiences with the word of God, how has it helped to benefit you to continue in your walk? I really want to know if the round table has proven itself to be beneficial. Amen. 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 All right. So as we are coming in and as we are in, we are getting ready. Amen. Uh, for the time when we share in uh, communion, in this commemoration of the life, death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ as we await his return, uh, be it in our lives or even in a 
future uh, event. Our faith holds true uh, to the fact that his word is true. Uh, the scripture says, let God be true and every man a liar. So if anything is true, God's word is true. So I want to read for us a passage of scripture before we go into uh, the communion. Then after the reading, I want to go, we want to uh, do a, a word of prayer. Amen. Uh, God bless you this morning, uh, Sister Nadine. We want to do a prayer, and then we want to come back after that uh, uh, time of prayer. Because during that time of prayer, watch this. As the Word of God says, we want to do a reflection during the time of prayer. During the time of prayer, we want to do a reflection uh, of our lives. Because you know what? I I've heard that some don't take communion because of the prior week or mm -hmm. something happened in the in that prior month. That's what that time of reflection is for. That's what that time of prayer is for. That we ask God uh, to to search us. And anything that is unlike him, we praying that he would, watch this, uh, not only remove from us as he has granted us the strength to remove, but that he would also forgive us for transgressions Amen. of the past. That we can, watch this, properly take uh, this communion with a clear conscience. That's what it's all about. Don't miss, don't miss out on the communion because you messed up during the month, all right? Yeah, yeah God is uh, faithful. Uh, he told us where, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. He said uh, his grace is sufficient and strength made perfect for weakness. He told us uh, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I wanted to put that out there to make sure that those uh, who have the ability to take communion in your own way within your private homes or whatever the case may be, do so, all right? Do so. So let me read the verse of scripture. Uh, first lady, do a short prayer uh, 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 for us to reflect, and then we'll uh, move forward. Amen. So we won't lose too much time. Amen. God bless you. Uh, first Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse number 23. King James Version. For I received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, uh, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you uh, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you uh, eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man, here it is, examine himself. And so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he that drinketh and eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation uh, to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned mm -hmm. with the world. God bless you at the reading of God's word. Let us take this time of reflection while uh, First Lady Minister Tracy prays that anything and everything that is not like God, that is in our lives or whatever the case may be, that we pray to God for his grace, uh, for his forgiveness, that we can move forward in the Lord. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you. We praise you. We stand in awe of who you are because you and you alone are high and lifted up. God, we submit our total being to you right now in the name of Jesus and always. Father, we thank you for this, uh, this opportunity to sit back and to reflect on your awesome sacrifice. We thank you for this opportunity to reflect on your love and your graciousness towards us. Father, we thank you even for the opportunity as we take active participation in the commencement or the memory of your awesome sacrifice that we can even look at our own lives. And we're praying right now for forgiveness of our own sins. Father, yes, we understand that you have already forgiven us, but we confess before you right now in the name of Jesus that even though you've given us your precious spirit that allows us to walk in obedience to truth, that we have not kept your word faithfully, Father. There were opportunities throughout the week that we could have brought glory to your name, Father God, but we chose to allow our flesh to sit on the throne of our life. And for that, we are sorry, Father God. 
God. We do not want to make an open shame of your sacrifice. God, we appreciate all that you have done. We, are, we appreciate you saving our souls. Continue to help us, Father God, we pray, to walk in a way that's pleasing before you. Even, God, to us denying our flesh, mortifying the deeds of our flesh on a daily basis. We need your help, Father God. But God, we are then are so grateful for your sacrifice. We're grateful for your love, Father God. Help us, God, to keep your truth in every area of our life. Help us to be a witness. Father, we take this communion not in vain, but we remember, God, your love, your grace, and your mercy, your sacrifice towards us. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us to be a more effective witness, Father God as we continue to live out your truth in every area of our lives. We thank you for these elements. We pray, God, that you will bless them according to your will. Bless our lives, God, according to your perfect will for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Those who are ready, amen. Uh, let us, um, as we have reflected, as we have prayed, as we have received God's forgiveness over our lives, amen, let us uh, ready ourselves. Paul said, for I received of the Lord also which I deliver unto you, that um, the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and, and, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Uh, this do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. After the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of of me. Let us drink together. Amen and amen. For as often as we eat of that bread and drink of that cup, we do show, we do reflect, we do commemorate uh, the life of Jesus until he returns. God bless you, each and every one. Now, let us get into this discussion that the word works. Let us get into this discussion that the word works. We see that some are already typing in some things, uh, typing in uh, the greetings. God bless each and every one of you that uh, shared with us. And then some are also typing in uh, some verses of scripture and some phrases but continue to bring them in because we, again, we want this to be a lively discussion. And I like how um, Mr. First Lady opened up this morning uh, saying uh, that, uh, talked about the benefit of the round table, that we are getting it. We're not just listening and then boom, about our business, but we, we want to make sure that we're getting what's being taught, we're, that we're getting uh, what God uh, is saying. It's, amen. And so let us move uh, right into uh, this discussion on today uh, with the limited time that we have left. And that way, when whatever it is that you've got to say, bring it in early because uh, that time, y'all know how it happens, that time uh, slips away. So we started off uh, with today's lesson uh, entitled The Word Works uh, out of Psalms 119, uh, 71 and 72. Now, again, Psalms 119, 71 and 72 is in uh, the stanza of Tet, which is really uh, verses uh, 65 to 72. Uh, re remember, every stanza is eight. Anybody remember that? Every, every stanza is eight uh, verses, and it's 22 in total because it's 22 Hebrew alphabets. Amen. And so we started all uh, in that um, opening, in, in that uh, 71st and 72nd um, 
verse talking about the impact of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And we asked the question, how has the word of God, and all, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about from the start, from the start of you really listening to the word of God, how has it impacted your life? And we heard a few examples from the introverts saying, it taught me how to open up. We, we, we uh, saw uh, uh, examples from those uh, who were spectators and said, it taught me how to engage more and so forth and so on. But now it's back out there again. How how has the word impacted your life? Amen. Amen. I do want to just read a very, very briefly a couple of the comments when we talked about um, how effective have this round table have been. Okay. Uh, Sister Diane said it's very effective. Sister Marlo said, yes, um, today's lesson was so on point. She said she'll go back and hear it again. So nice. many great biblical references that tie to the discussion. Of course, um, Deacon Lewis said it was beneficial. Uh, Sister Nadine said it absolutely helps her. I look forward to seeing it, and it gives her a better understanding. I think I want to thank each and every one of you who offered comments concerning the roundtable being beneficial. Because I can tell you, like I've already said, that for me to actually go back and talk it out, it helps it to be more solidified in my understanding. So mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And concerning the text on today, you know, after we ended the broadcast, I honestly uh, told Pastor Glass, like, I don't have a lot of notes because this text today, the way he presented it, it required my undivided attention, uh, my undivided attention. So I will have to go back, listen to it again so I can take some notes. Now, I do have some key things that he said, okay. but as far as having a whole bunch of notes, I was just all in. I was engaged during the presentation of the word. So people, we're going to need you helping, okay? We are going to need you helping. You know, as always, Pastor Glassby gives a wonderful backdrop of the text of scripture that he's coming from. And how many know that that's important? Mm -hmm. Having proper context of what's being spoken is absolutely be um, important. He talked about, you know, the different genres of life. I'm sorry, the different genres in the book of Psalms. He talked about the number of writers and even the number of Psalms that had anonymous writers. But when it came to this particular um, text of scripture, this particular Psalm, Psalm 119, he pointed out that this Psalm is a Psalm of wisdom. And one of the things that he talked about, so he said all verses, he said except for three verses. I haven't written down here some. Oh, 80. verse 84, 121, and 122. Mm -hmm. it, with the exception of those three verses, every verse in this 119th Psalm talked about the Word of God. To Whether, the other 173. Yeah, the 173. Whether it was calling it the Word of God, His precepts, His statute, His law, it talks about the Word of God. This Psalm in and of itself, it shows the believer how important the actual word of God nice, is nice. in our lives. Yes. How important us following the laws, the statutes, the precept, the word of God really helps to transform our character because that's one of the things we've been talking about. That's what he talked about last week. How the word of God transforms our character. How the word of God helps shape and develop us. We can't say, honestly, that we're professing believers if we don't love the word of God. Mm. Yes. We can't say honestly if we're professing believers that we don't appreciate what the word of God is does to us. And, you know, particularly on this topic on today, it talks about being afflicted and <laughs> how it's beneficial when the word of God comes to correct us. How many know that that's great news? Amen. That is absolutely great news. So, again. Come on, let's hear your comments. Let's bring them um, all on in so we can begin to actively engage this text. You know, one of the things, too, opening up that Pastor Glassby said, and I think is so vital, especially when we look at all the, the negative things mm -hmm. like that's taking place in our current culture, when we look how one issue is pitting another group of people against another group. You know, it's just so much divisiveness mm -hmm. that we can see in our current culture. But I love, love, love how Pastor Glass laid it out and said, instead of us seeing, he said, we need to see souls mm -hmm. versus seeing people. Right. Because when we see people, we see targets, basically he was saying. But when we see souls, when we see people as God sees them, when we see the soul of men in need of a savior, yes. we're more apt to reflect the nature of the character of God in our life, to draw that soul onto Christ. Instead of looking at people, looking at their issues, looking at the points of contention, I mean contention, looking at how we disagree with each other. No, we have to still understand that yes, there is a human person with human issues, 
but behind it all, it's a soul in need of saving. Amen. And that's what our viewpoint needs to be. Yes, we disagree. We may disagree on every point, but I still have a responsibility as a believer to preach Jesus Christ to that soul. I still have a responsibility as a believer to love that soul just as God has loved him. Amen. Amen. In other words, in layman's turn, if you, if you need a t-shirt for it, when looking at humans, we ought to see uh, 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 not see men, we ought to see a mission. Amen. That, that, that's why we were created uh, for a mission. So we not uh, not to see the man, we ought to see the mission uh, that we have in the man's life. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. That, that was big because that was one of the that was one of the answers uh, to how has the word impacted us. Mm -hmm. And then that last one of how the word impacted us was monitoring our time. You know, people don't understand how how essential giving God proper time of your day, of your week, of your month, of your year, how essential that is. Because the truth of the matter is the time that we are not given to God, we're given to self. And be honest with this, uh, uh, sometimes the time that we're given to ourselves is not really in the things of God. Though we may stamp his name on it from time to time, but the truth of the matter is there ought to be intentional time set aside just for God, you know, uh, we can binge watch from time to time, you know, relax, let your hair back, whatever Amen. the case may be, go bowling, shoot pool, you know, put your uh, Oculus uh, VR on or whatever the case may be, but there ought to be time that I set aside, this is for nothing else, not for texting, not for surfing yes. the social media uh, uh, sites, this is just for God, and the Word of God will teach us how to monitor our time. Amen, mm -hmm. amen, amen, amen. Now, um, we're going to just dive right into the lesson. Mm -hmm. I see some of the comments yeah. are, are coming in. And Pastor Glass again came from Psalm 119, verses 71 through 72. Mm -hmm. But I love how he went back, <clears throat> excuse me, and started at verse number 60, 65, we read down to 72, to give us context. Mm -hmm. And what we see here is the writer basically acknowledging acknowledging before God how valuable the word of God is. Mm -hmm. And specifically, um, verse number 67, when Pastor um, Glass was talking, he said, before, this is the ESV, the text says, before I was afflicted, mm -hmm. I went astray. Right. But now I keep your words. Now, what was really key, he said, before <laughs> I was afflicted, mm -hmm. before I was afflicted, so before... I could uh, actually allow the word of God to be a benefit to me. I walked outside and the correction of the word of God is what brought me back in line. Right. And Pastor Glassby went on to say concerning that is how when we're honest with ourselves, if we look at the trials, the tribulations and the issues of our life, talking about stuff that we allowed ourselves to get involved mm -hmm. in. Our willful sins have caused pain in our life. But how has the word of God, when we allow it to be applied to that situation or that circumstance, how has it corrected us? Right. How has it shaped us? How has it, you know, transformed the way we think or renewed our mind when we allow the word of God to correct in a hard situation? And, and honestly, in our humanity, when we are hurting, mm -hmm. sometimes we rebel against the truth. Right. Sometimes when we are hurting, we, we don't want to hear at that particular moment in time how we feel, how we allowed ourselves to get caught up. And I'm not saying that every instance of pain is our own doing because sometimes it, it, it's all because of sin, whether it's our sin or whether it's the sin of somebody and we are caught in the crossfires or we, you know, we receive some of the outcome or the backblast from somebody else's sin. And that can't help in a situation like if somebody else is um say like you have a, a family who you know a husband and wife married with children but the husband or the wife is an alcoholic that person's sin can affect the whole entire family so they can, we can't have bad blasts from other people saying i just say that to say that every time we experience pain doesn't mean it's always at our own hand but particularly when we're talking about here in this text pastor glassy was talking about our own personal willful sin our own personal willful sin that caused pain in our life but the point was that when we allow the word of god to address it we are actually made better and i think that proves the point that god can use anything 
any situation or circumstance in our life to help define, to help shape our character. Because remember, the ultimate desire of God is what? To conform us to the image of his son. So no, God is not a fan of evil. No, he is not causing us to pain, you know, be, you know, endure pain on purpose. No, we're not saying that, but we're saying that God can use that. Even though we're suffering in a particular moment of time, if we allow the word of God to address the issue, mm -hmm. if we can deny, you know, the pain of our flesh, deny our humanity for a moment, that we can clearly see God and hear God in every situation of circumstance, we will be made better. Our character is being refined. Our character is being defined at those moments in time. So how many of you have a personal testimony that when you willfully walked outside the will of God, but you allowed the word of God to address the issue, were you made better? Did you come out of that situation and circumstances with a new perspective? Was your vision made more clear? Did you walk closer to the word of God? Amen. Amen. And and, and truthfully, and we talked about the concept of having uh, serving uh, providential God who is in touch and involved in the very intricate details of our lives. And so that means, watch this, that means we have to look at both sides of the spectrum because we often talk about the pain and the hurt mm -hmm. that pushes us further away from God, but we don't talk about the pleasure uh, and the advancements and the mm -hmm. achievements that also push us away from God. And that's why I quoted um, uh, uh, some of Spurgeon's writing, uh, talked of Charles Spurgeon's writing, talked about, you know what, why is it that, you know, some of us can't handle pleasure? When stuff starts happening great in our lives, we just kind of just lose it. So mm -hmm. so it's both sides of the spectrum. It's sometimes when we're ha uh, what we call or construe as too much pain, we fall back away from God. And when we have too much pleasure, you know, uh, our, our finances have grown, you know, we got so much money that we can do what, uh, you know, politically we've risen uh whatever the case may be on, on our status has grown and we can't we somehow don't handle it like god wants us to handle it and it pushes us further away from him so so i, I, I appreciate how you talked about the pain but but please also look at both sides of the spectrum that that anything can be used uh by the enemy uh to to push us away from further away from god Amen, amen. And to your point, when you were just talking briefly about spending quality time with God, Deacon Lewis said, yes, the word works if we let it. If we let it. Yeah, make yourself available to the working of God's word daily. He also put in here, see, I agree wholeheartedly that quality time with God and his word is critical in our daily living. I can step it up. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that that's, that that's where that's where it comes from. Because you know what? Here's the great... Uh, the great quality that is found uh, in this text, in this uh, stanza of, of the psalm, is the writer was talking about himself. That's right. See that? And, and, and I like this as a concept for Christians everywhere, for believers everywhere, that when we are uh, embracing the word of God as truth, embrace it, uh, amen, personally first. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. I, I think it's very easy for us to preach to others. And Paul said uh, that, 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 that I, the reason I stand so firm with the word of God is because I have a fear that I have preached unto others and I myself be a castaway. You know what I mean? And so I thank you for that, uh, Deacon Lewis, to say, you know what I mean? I'm going to preach to others. I'm going to teach others. But I'm also going to be such an example of what I teach and preach yeah. and that, that they will know uh, that it is actually real. And, and, and when I find myself slipping into darkness, I'm going to check myself. Uh, what did right. Psalm 101 say? That I'll behave myself. Yeah. Even within my own house, I'm going to behave right. myself. Thank you for that, Deacon Lewis. Amen. Uh, uh, Brother Ed said, the word keeps me Christ-minded, that my lifestyle may line up with the word of God. Absolutely. Come on, Brother Ed. That was big right there. Put in our Philippians 2 and 5 on that. I like it. Amen. To let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. He earlier put in Psalm 119, it says, uh, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's how it's done. Amen. Thy word. Thy word. Amen. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Deacon Penn said, We must submit ourselves to God and not to sin.
Amen. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. That, that's what God is calling us to. He's calling us to be conformed to the image of his son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I, and as a matter of fact, and tell him to put in uh, uh, Romans uh, 12 and 2 for that. Uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing Renewing. of your mind. That you, yeah, that you might prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Thank you Amen. for that, Deacon, Deacon uh, Penn. Uh, Sister Dottie said that we should always be looking for wisdom and understanding of the word. Mm, nice. Thank you. That's Amen. true. Amen. Yeah, we, I think we quoted James. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to what? Every Amen. man liberally. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. 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 Um, so we see here, okay, he said, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your words. And we go down to verse number 71. It says, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Wow. How many of us say, say that? How many of us can honestly say when we look back over the life of our life, though we didn't welcome it and sometimes we didn't want it, that we can see the value. Yeah of the afflictions that we had to go through, some of the pains that we have to suffer. We can see the value yeah. in having to go through that, but why can't we see the value? Because it has shaped our character. It has changed the way we think. It has made our perspective more in line with the way God sees things. It has helped our us to have a more biblical world view of things. How many of you actually have that testimony? You, you hated the pain, you hated mm -hmm. the affliction while you were going through, but, when you apply the word of God, it transforms you. Now it makes you think better. You know, one of the things that um, sometimes we say, even as this is a very practical illustration, when we're coming up, we didn't like when our parents disciplined us. We didn't like when we got in trouble for doing things that mm -hmm. we didn't like. We didn't like when we got in trouble for lying, for stealing those different things. We didn't appreciate the pain in the moment, the discomfort that we were feeling. But now as we've grown up, we look back. And we appreciate the discipline that our parents gave us. We appreciate them correcting our bad behavior because now it dictates to who we are now in the present. So how many of you can really say, you know what? I really appreciate having to be disciplined, having to be chastised, and having to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that and that was the, that was the first point. I'm glad you just jumped straight into that. That was the first point. It talked about the benefit yes. of the word of God. See, watch this. When you come to the place of appreciating the benefit of the word, that that that's when you have stopped crying mm -hmm. and complaining and comparing yourself to somebody else's situation while you're dealing with something, while you're being affected, while you're going through. Do you know? Because we 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 can we can really spend quality time just crying and complaining yeah, about right. things are not like I want them to be or whatever the case may be. Why is God allowing this and why did he allow that? But the writer said, you know what? This, this really helped me. That's right. <laughs> now, I ain't see it on the front end no. like you were just talking about. It didn't seem like a benefit. From, but the now, in retrospect, it was good for me that I was afflicted because you know what? It, it, I, I, after a while, if I had kept going like I was going, right. I would have wrecked myself. Amen. I would have literally wrecked myself. So in retrospect, it was good that I, that I was afflicted. God had to put a stop to it uh, before it put a stop to me. Amen. God bless you. That Amen. was good. Amen. Thank you. You know, but for us to be able to come to that place, mm -hmm. we have to learn to take personal responsibility for yes. our behavior. We have to learn to actually admit to ourselves first, you know what, I was wrong. Yes. I, I see my part in this. Then when we actually can say, I see my part, I take responsibility mm, for my nice. role, then we can better appreciate the correction. Right. And won't be bitter or angry or hold grudge. You know, I don't know how we can hold a grudge against God, but. <laughs> oh, we do. But, but God is sovereign. He is just in all that he does. Mm -hmm. But I know sometimes, you know, out of our lack of understanding, we may say things like that. But once we really, again, take personal responsibility for the part we played in whatever, then we can better appreciate the correction that comes. And, you know, I was sitting here thinking how we talk about how we can allow the word of God to correct us, how we can take the word of God and hide it in our heart. Mm. But, you know, I always look at the practical illustrations of everything. Somebody might be asking, well, how do you do it? And I can honestly tell you, there is no magic formula, no people. Magic formula. No, it's just a matter of you doing it. 
How did you learn to ride a bike? You couldn't sit back and look and just say, I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn without getting on, on that bicycle and riding in and falling a couple of times. No, you just have to step out and trust the word of God. There is no formula. You just have to believe the word of God and walk in obedience continuously through the word of God and you'll see the transformation taking place in your life. That's how it happens. That's how we learn to be obedient to the word of God. First of all, the word says that faith come by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. We have to trust in God's word. We have to continue to read. We say oftentimes, this is not our quote. This is something I learned in school, that uh, repetition is the hallmark of learning. We got to keep reading the word over and over and over again. Even when we read stuff that we don't understand, you got to keep reading it and praying and ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. You got to keep rehearsing it. You got to keep meditating on it. You got to keep being intentional to live it out. And that's how you grab hold to it. Mm -hmm. There is no formula. Don't let nobody trick you. Don't let nobody who, you know, we think is super spiritual try to convince you. No, they had to come the same way. Amen. Because there is no formula. We just have to step out and do what the word says. Amen. Amen. And 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 the power the power is in watch this the actual word of God. Uh, First John one four uh, says, uh, 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 brethren, uh, try the spirits uh, whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. And I know that text is talking about uh, prophecy and false prophecy. But the thing he was really trying to, uh, John was trying to point out was uh, to examine the scriptures by the scriptures. And that way uh, we won't uh, build this false or, or this facade of righteousness uh, in God's word. Watch this. While, uh, 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 while drawing from an inaccurate word. All right. So in other words, the, the way I gain strength and, and knowledge and, and wisdom and peace is by what God has said, not what they said Amen. God said. All right. Amen. And so, uh, so, so, and, and, and that again, uh, it, it contributes to the benefit because it's not a benefit because they say God said it. It's a benefit because God said it. And then guess what? And then I went on and did it, you know, what walked in That's the right. principles and, and not be, I like how you said, not be fooled by everything else that say, I, I quoted Genesis three and one. That the serpent, uh, it, which is the devil, uh, was more subtle than any beast of the field that God ever made. He knows how to twist words up and, and make it sound something like God's word, you know. And that's why we have to be diligent enough to study the word. And I, and I like how you said, not just the word, but then, then also uh, the faith. You, you quoted uh, Romans 10, 17. Did anybody ever type that in? Romans 10, 17. Uh, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word the of word God. Of this God. is how my faith is fortified that's right. by the word oh, of God. God. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. But all in all, that's what fortifies uh, our faith, the word of God. Amen. Nice, nice. Amen. Sister uh, Annette Jackson says, um, I fell Antoinette. In, I'm sorry, Antoinette Jackson said, I fell in love with Romans 12 on yesterday. Yes, Amen. indeed. Amen. Look, I'm, look, that's my niece, my beautiful niece. God bless you. Look, I am in love with Romans chapter 12. Matter of fact, if if you just read those first five verses, yes. that'll sustain you throughout the in, the entire day because it's so much uh, instruction and love. Where the writer he said, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, what by the mercies Jesus of God, God that you present your bodies a living, living sacrifice, sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Watch and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of." God. God, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, here it is, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And here's the church part, for we, as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every member is one member of God. Another. Another. That is devastatingly a blessing in the life of anybody who will internalize that. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Antoinette. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Uh, Brother Ed said, the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It cuts and it heals. There you go. Type in Hebrews uh, uh, 4, 4 and 12 for that. Yes. There you go. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Sister um, 
Dorothy Jackson said that sometimes the purpose of God's word is to discipline us because we are God's children and he loves us at all times. And it heals us, it comforts, and it protects us. Amen, amen, amen. absolutely. Deacon Lewis said, our we, we quoted that too in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 11, you know. With, with God, God, and when we're chasing, we're chasing yeah, uh, by God. Yeah, absolutely. Love us. Um, Deacon Lewis also said our situation should not detect our praise or may, maybe dis, distract from our praise and our love for God. But our praise and our love for God can overcome all situations. Trust God and God alone. Nice, nice. We quoted that too, Deacon Lewis, in Psalm 34. Talking about we are blessed the Lord at all times. Yeah. And his praise shall what? Continually be in our mouths. Thank you. Y'all bringing this thing alive. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the points that I have written down, like I said, I couldn't get a whole bunch because I was just off. listening. <laughs> but I have written down that being afflicted when our emotions rule over our decisions. And what I um, believe that you were talking about is then how sometimes we may see situations in our favor. We may think that we are doing the right thing because of past experiences. Mm -hmm. But in those times when we allow our emotions wow. or our experiences overrule truth, then we're being afflicted and we don't see that way. See it that way. You know, one of the um, examples that specifically that Pastor Glass gave is how when you let somebody borrow money once or two times and they don't pay you back and now they in dire need. Maybe their business failed or maybe whatever this, the harsh situation that they find themselves in but because they hadn't paid you back those one or two times, they come to you a third time. You have the ability, you have the means to extend help a third time but you refuse because of those other past two experiences where you did not receive your resources back. But you have the means to, excuse me, the means to help, but you refuse. He um, showed us that as being an example of us being afflicted, meaning mm -hmm. our emotions got the best of us. Because right. I'm telling you, we have the means to help, but when you just outright refuse to help, then that's us. Our emotions, our past experiences, our anger, you know, our whatever it is that's saying, you know what, I'm not going to help you anymore. So you got to figure this thing out on your own. We're being afflicted because right. when we allow our emotions to override truth, mm. when we allow our emotions to override what it looks like to walk out the truth of the scriptures, then that's us being afflicted. And God's word has to come in and it has to what? Chasten us. To, for the what? For the purpose of perfecting us, to the for the purpose of conforming us to the image of His Son. Now, now we this is not us speaking with a double or forked tongue, mm -hmm. because there are situations where we really need to seek the face of God. Should I put myself in a position to be a help to you? Because we don't want to get in God's way, but we got to be open to hear what God. Even if that third time, if you're honestly praying and asking God. Should I help? And you hear audible, oh, not audible, but you know that it should be a yes, but you allow your feelings to get in the way and you still say no, or you refuse to pray about that situation, period, thinking I'm just going to use my wisdom. Our wisdom is like, it's nothing compared to the wisdom of God. Amen. We need to be seeking God in every situation in every circumstance to see which way we should go because oftentimes we are ruled by our emotions right mm -hmm. about what we see the world is doing but no god can use any situation any circumstances he can turn it around and we don't always have to understand why we don't always have to understand god why i've given to this person twice they didn't pay me back and now they're coming back again but you're still telling me to give we don't have to understand why we just need to be obedient to God's yes. Amen. Amen. So in other words, if, if you can close your eyes and close your heart to a need, uh, the person who's in need is not the victim. You're, you you're the yes. actual victim. You're the victim. And, and like you say, sometimes God will give us a firm no, right. you know, as a, an, a, an anointed word. Sometimes no can be anointed. That's right. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we're just, um, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, when we just helping folk with their uh, uh, enabling, enabling. Yeah. There you go. See, yeah, we're enabling folk, and so we, but but don't just jump to that conclusion. Right. We're enabling now, we, but we literally we have to earnestly pray to God and That's see what right. He wants us to do, and not just close. Because if we can close our hearts that easily, we're the actual victim. Yeah, because mm -hmm. all you have to do honestly is just look at your own life, our own lives. 
How many times that we mess up and we keep going back to God? Or even in a very practical situation, if you're married or you know a parent-child relationship, how many times that you as a parent or you as a child, you messed up, you as a spouse or you, I mean a husband or wife, you messed up, but you had to keep going back, asking for forgiveness and asking for help. What if that person who extended themselves decide to allow their emotions to get on the throne of their life or to decide to withheld, you know, their bounds of compassion when it was in their power to do so? So we can't be so quick to tell people no because they've done it a time and time and time again. We, again, like Pastor Glassman said, we have to always pray. And God, which way should I go? Are you using me in this situation to be a blessing and not to allow our emotions or our personal opinions or our personal preferences to ride on the throne of our life? Because how many of you know that, you know, if we're honest, we're not always <laughs> thinking with a biblical worldview. And which leads to our second point. Talk about that balance. Yeah, you gotta see? have balance. See, now we're going, we're going into right. balance. We're going into balance, and and that that's the whole concept. See, now watch this. Balance won't come if I haven't learned the benefit. That's right. I gotta go ahead and be honest with you there. Balance, balance has to come uh, into play uh, 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 after that. I've received uh, the, the the understanding of the benefit of God's word of me even being put in circumstances and situations that I had to earnestly pray to God mm -hmm. for wisdom in instead of just responding and reacting out of my own. And I, I told you, Paul used uh, the, the Corinthians mantra that they would, their little go-to, mm -hmm. you know, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, but I won't be put under the power of any. Yeah, that, that was just a mantra that they were using. That was just a phrase that they were using to justify, watch this, their actual sinful lives and call it Christian liberty, you know? So these weren't Paul words, though. That was Paul uh, repeating back to them, this is what you say. You say all things are lawful, but not expedient, but you're just using it as avenues uh, uh, to try to stay within. You know how, how folk have, have tried to stay churchy, mm -hmm. but sin at the same time? Yeah, he said, that's what y'all using that, that for. The, the truth is, whenever you say or do anything that is offending someone else, that is causing someone else to stray, though you say it's, it's your Christian liberty, it's actually sin in mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So there has to be, go ahead, it has to be balanced. Right? I just want to, um, um, uh, Antoinette, she wrote, um, amen, she said, I had to rethink about a few things after reading Romans 12, mm. but now I don't even care about the money I loaned him. It's okay that he's not even paying me back. Amen. And that and that's the heart we we uh have to come to. And watch this. Uh and I I'll just say to folk, uh as as we testify of, of the goodness of God in our lives, of the growth in our lives, we ought to also uh be uh ready and expected, watch this, to be tried uh in that same area or in greater areas in our lives. Because what have God is not a one hit wonder. He's consistent. He's immutable. That is unchanging and unchangeable in um, Hebrews 5. So uh, uh, Galatians 5. So uh, we have to make sure that uh, as we testify of these things, that it, this is uh, from the citadel of my soul, that God is in control of all things, including my life. That's an awesome testimony yeah. because folk uh, uh, take a lifetime to come to that place after being wrong. They come to a lifetime Will, right. will, will use a lifetime to recover from what somebody said to them wrong, did to them wrong, right. whatever the case may be. So, so we definitely applaud that faith, uh, Antoinette, uh, to, to that place uh, of growth uh, and acknowledgement of the power of God over your life. And watch this. In turn, watch this. It, it, it uh, contributes to the balance. The balance. It Amen. contributes to the balance. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, um, one of the things that you were talking about, too, when you talk about that text in Corinthians, when it talks about these people who had matured in the things of God, yeah. they understood, understood that eating meat offered to the idols, idols don't even, you know, they have no effect on us. So they could eat the meat. But the babe mm -hmm. who come out of that kind of worship, they were offended by it. And the point is, you can't push a babe from A to Z. Right. You have to grow step by step by step with the babe. So your liberty, your understanding, your maturity in the word, you cannot use that to try to push 
somebody too fast and too hard. Again, you have to slow down. If you're going to eat the meat, this is just an example. Eat the meat that's offered to the idols. Eat it behind closed doors in your home. Mm -hmm. Don't eat it in the public square with that person who just came out of right. pagan worship and knew what that meant to them. Now they see you eating it? Wait a minute. Right. Because that's it's contrary. A, it's, it's an expensive loss. It Watch is. this. On both sides. Right. It's like you buying um, uh, uh, Aston Martin right? One expensive car. And watch this. And you put your eight month old baby in the car, put it in drive expect and wave. Expecting that, 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 expect that baby to drive. That's expensive on both sides. That is the value of that car is gone and maybe the life of that child is yeah. gone. So watch this. Same with the value of the word of God and the life of that spiritual babe. That's right. See, same, same thing. We, you can't just expect babes to just come to the place that you've been, you've been in and around this word of God for 40 years. Yeah. And you can't just expect somebody to see it your way That's just right. because of your so-called Christian liberty. No. no, it don't work like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you. one of the things you said that I have written down here is that our love for God will put limits on our liberty. Is there? Our so love for God, that meaning we will allow our love for God to override yes. our pleasure. And I'm talking about pleasures that are in line with the will of God. Yes, yes it may be the will of God that I can do this, but I'm not going to do it at the expense or the offense of somebody who doesn't know as much as I do. Right. Who doesn't understand the word, who's not as mature in the word as I am. No, I can put my pleasures aside for my love for God. And, and because if I really love God... My desire is to really be a vessel with or a conduit to love other people. I need to be able to allow God to love through me. And if I allow my own personal desires, my own Christian liberties, my own pleasures to override my love, that's a problem. Right. So, so, so watch this. Uh, uh, pastor, bishop, uh, uh, deacon, uh, uh, brother and sister in Christ, if you happen to believe, watch this, that drinking wine is not really outside of God's words. You've searched the scriptures and you say, I don't see nowhere in the scripture that told us not to drink wine. Watch this. That's your conviction, whatever the case may be. But now you got company over. Uh, you don't just break out the wine. Mm -hmm. Huh? You see what just yeah, happened? Sure, don't yeah. just break out the wine because they may not understand yeah. your conviction That's right. or as it relates to the word of God. Now you've caused others to stumble. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Your Christian liberty has just become sin. Amen. Amen. Boom. Amen. Amen. Again, that's why those of us who are mature in the word, we have to do what? Disciple mm -hmm. babes in Christ. Yes. We have to disciple them in the things of God. And we got to start small. Just think how people had to start with us. Baby Start steps. small, baby steps, baby just step. giving them the basic foundation of the scriptures, of the truth, and allow them to mature mm -hmm. as they're reading and studying and meditating and applying the word of God. They will begin to mature as the Holy Spirit gives them understanding. So again, we have to not allow our Christian liberty to outweigh everything else. That right. goes again with Pastor Glassman saying we have to have balance in our life, balance, balance across the board in all things. Amen? Amen. Okay, so get some more uh, comments. If you got some more comments on that, and then we'll tackle that third point and watch. Everybody got something to say about that third point. I know you do. Why? Because you can hear my voice. You can see my face. That means you are blessed. But we're going to go into blessed once we uh, just search for a couple of more um, uh, uh, comments here. I just have one from um, Brother Ed. He brought Psalms 119105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light, light unto mm. my path. You know what? And the uh, great, 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 great. Who's that, Deacon Pan? No, uh, Brother Ed. Brother Ed. Oh, thank you, Brother Ed, because that is the whole point. The lamp unto my feet means the word of God actually keeps me from stumbling mm -hmm. over obstacles in my way. In other words, it don't remove the obstacles. Right. It just so keeps me from stumbling, stumbling over them. them. You know what happened just now? I can see it coming. And, and, and since God has given me a warning, watch this, John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulations. Ah, but be of good cheer. I've shined a light at your feet. I've given you a light to see them coming. I've given you a light to acknowledge that they exist. And all you got to do now is walk in my will and my way and you won't stumble over this. Be of good cheer. He said, I've overcome 
the world. And it also not only is a lamp to my feet, thank you, Brother Ed, but it's a light to my path. In other words, I can now see where God is leading That's me. Right. I can see where he's guiding and directing my path because you know what? Because it all looks the same. Uh, he only leads me and guides me in the way of truth. That's that was right. big, Brother Ed. Thank you for that. Amen. 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 Um, your uh, final point, um, talking about a blessed people. And I have written down here, we become a blessed people when we understand the benefits of truth and we walk and live in balance. Right. That, that's absolutely true. Because I, I'll just read that first verse that I quoted during that time in, in Psalm 1. This is the first song that says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Watch this. This is not saying not walking in the counsel of ungodly people. He said, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of ungodly, which means I'm not taking no horrible advice from anybody and I'm not going to give myself no horrible advice. All of my advice for my life is going to come from the word of God. He walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners. What do you mean stand in the way of sinners? Like I'm blocking sinners? No, that means this is not a person who lives the life uh, of the of the sinners that he uh, witnessed. In other words, you know how we used to say, you can't beat them, join them? No, this is one that refuses to join them. This is one who says, you know what? Regardless of what, if I got to stand and walk this life alone, I'm going to walk it alone with just Jesus uh, with me. I I'm not going to operate in the mindset of the world just because my back is up against the wall. You know, we, we do make certain compromises as it relates uh, to that, you know, and that's one of the ways of us saying that I don't I don't uh, uh, know that I'm blessed because when opportunities come and, and the devil's signature is all over it, but I think I see a benefit wow. in it, we just snatch it. But the, the psalmist here says, no, I'm not, I'm not going for that benefit. You know what? Right here, I can become a multimillionaire or I can live from paycheck to paycheck. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to live paycheck to paycheck, but I'm going to still be in the will That's of right. God. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Watch this. What is the seat of the scornful? The seat of the scornful is by their words, your life moves. You see what just happened right there? By their words, your life moves. They, they, they're talking about the size of your ministry. You know, you only got 45 members uh, in the church. Uh, you could have tens of thousands. Well, And so guess what? You start thinking, you know what? Maybe I'm going to get some lights and some smoke and some dramatic music. And, and, and maybe I'll start talking about, you know, you were born that way and all this kind of stuff so the church can grow. No, baby. Uh, I'm going to be moved by the word of God and not by the word of them. Amen. That was big right there. That's how I know I'm blessed because I don't walk in the counsel of ungodly. That is my own ungodly advice or others. Don't stand in the way of sinners. I'm not going to become what God hates be just to fit in. No. And neither am I going to be so moved by what people say in my life because I, I understand ultimately anything that is said that is not like God actually came from the, the devil. devil. Anybody remember Ephesians 6 and 12? That we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Amen, 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 amen. So here's an opportunity for you to plug in your final comments. We have yeah. just a few more minutes Come on. on the broadcast. So uh, Sister Diane said, Amen, Pastor. I'm so grateful that you only preach the word of God. Word of God. Amen. Brother Ronald says, Teach, Pastor. Amen. But you know what? But but these, the, I, I'm glad y'all saying that. And praise God for you. But you know what? But everybody who's on this line, uh, you guys are doing the exact same thing. You're doing the exact thing. And that's what makes me so glad to be a part of this remnant is because, you know what? Okay, it's, it's not uh, 50,000 folk, you know, involved in this move of God. But the truth of the matter is the ones who are here, the ones who are here are for God's move instead of just trying to see what we can do, just doing stuff and stamping Jesus' name on it. So I I applaud you, uh, Deaconess Penn. I applaud you, Brother Ronald, to just stay in this word. And everybody you come 
in contact with, just tell them that the word works. Okay? Amen. 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 God Amen. bless you. Amen. I, I will say that, that there's enough people out there just doing stuff. Just doing stuff. But we need more people just to stick to the word of God. Yes. Just let the word works. Amen. <laughs> Let's just word do word. what the word says. Amen. 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 Period. Amen. Period. Uh, Brother Ed typed in uh, Proverbs 4.21. He says, mm. death and life is in the power of the tongue, mm. and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Uh, Amen. Proverbs 18. 1821. Okay, good. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, amen. Thank uh, you. Sister Melody say, so you're not keeping up with the Joneses? Mm -mm. Absolutely nope. not, sis. Nope. Be uh -uh. not be not conformed, Romans 12, too. Not conform to, to the world, world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. amen. Thank you for that. Amen. God bless you. It looks like that we are at the end of our comments. We want to thank you wholeheartedly for all your wonderful let, and let me say a couple more shout outs Go that ahead. I didn't see because I I, I, I I meant to say I, I saw my uh, brother uh, Gary on here uh, God bless you and I did see Sister Jean Sister Jean we know that you're in the number so God bless you and uh, thank you. I see uh, Sister Cindy. I didn't get a chance to, to shout you out today, but God bless you. And so many others, amen, who are, are on this uh, uh, post. Uh, please, please, please remember to share this. And anybody who did not see the broadcast, go back and see the broadcast and share it with share. somebody else. And watch, all month long, we're going to be talking about this infamous Word of God all month long. So Wednesday night, we're going to be talking about um, the Word of God. Uh, uh, build. We talked about it, Bill. Character. character. So now we're going to talk about it, Bill. Commitment on Wednesday. So look, come on in on Wednesday and we'll talk about uh, how the Word of God builds uh, commitments. But until then, I'm going to move out the way, let um, our First Lady uh, Tracy close in her own way. But, um, oh, uh, uh, Wednesday's uh, verse, uh, Bible uh, verse going to be uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 3, just in case. All right. God bless you. Love you all so much. Looking forward to uh, this next time around. Amen. I just want a uh, final comment. The title of this sermon on today was The Word Works. The Word Works. Again, I just want to iterate, reiterate, that there is no magic formula to the Word working mm. in your life. There is nothing that somebody can do for you to make the Word work. It's a personal responsibility. Nice. It's a personal decision. For those of us who have submitted to the call of Christ in our life, it's a personal responsibility for us to read, to study, and to apply. Yes. The only way the Word works in your life is if you do what the Word says. It's just that simple. Just simple. It's just that simple. And yes, initially when we start to do what the Word works, because it's contrary to what we've done all of our life. It's contrary to how we've always, you know, thought about stuff, how we perceive stuff. But now we're going to the place where we want to take on a biblical worldview about everything. The word of God is contrary. So it's going to be some growing pains involved. There's going to be some missteps involved. There's going to be some heartache involved. But to God be the glory for it all. Because remember, one of the things that this pastor has talked about, how God could use those pains, our willful sin, those things to direct, to correct, to reform our character. So we welcome it. Amen. We, we welcome it. The word of God really does work. We just have to be intentional enough to sit still enough to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, to mature us, to grow us in the things of God so that we can actually apply it to the everyday rhythms of our life. If by chance you're listening and you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, the moment your heart agrees with truth, because it has nothing to do with the people, the moment your heart agrees with truth, the moment you realize by the unction of the Holy Spirit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, that there is absolutely nothing you can do in and of yourself to mend the gulf between you and God, that you are not great all by yourself. The moment we realize this and we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and we surrender our lives with a heart of contrition and accept Christ as Lord of your life, the moment your heart agrees with this truth, the Word of God says that you are sealed into the day of reason. Redemption. Now that you have saved, God has done all the heavy lifting. We have a personal responsibility to walk out the truth. We have a personal responsibility to partner with a Bible-believing church where we can be properly discipled, where we can be grown, where we can be grown in the Word of God, where we can become disciples who make disciples. If this is you, we want to hear from you. We want to celebrate the God of our salvation with you. We welcome you to continue to log on every Wednesday at the 7 o'clock hour, followed by 8.15 
15 roundtable. And again, on Sunday morning at the 10 o'clock hour, followed by a 10, 15 roundtable. So until Wednesday at the 7 o'clock hour, pastor's already given us the text for next Wednesday. Let's do our due diligence and let's go ahead and read the text, figure out the context and ask the Holy Spirit to give us understanding of what yes. this text actually means so we can actively engage on this coming Wednesday. Remember the memory verse for the month, Hebrews 4, verse number 12. Amen. So God bless you. Continue to pray for this Remnant Community Church where we are determined of building strong people through the word of God, and we'll continue to pray for each and every one of you. We love you in the love of the Lord. Amen. Amen.